Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska. Native news, native information, and native fun, and that's what this is all about today. This is a field strip check for uh, Tuesday, the 22nd of January, 2002. This is uh, channel two with the wireless microphone. And this is channel one with the uh, stick microphone. Segment called Cooking in a Heartbeat. It's a great show. Stay tuned and I'll be back with Heartbeat Alaska right after this.
Okay, first of all, just so I can check that microphone, could you just say your name and spell it for me? Yes, uh, Dick Katnaw, C-A-T-T-A-N-A-C-H. All right. And uh, first of all, in broad sense, why is the, uh, the work the, com the commission doing so important? Well, what it's doing is focusing on some of the priorities in rural Alaska, and it's bringing resources, both federal, state, uh, and the Denali Commission money to those resources. And uh, the commission has a number of uh, key principles. Talk about one that stands out in your mind. Well, I think one of them is sustainability. Uh, the whole idea that if you invest in, in rural Alaska, and if we make a commitment to rural Alaska for some of the resources to address some of the, the priorities, that uh, there's the ability in rural Alaska to uh, sustain that. Um, now, rural Alaska has definitely seen a number of government projects come and go. What makes uh, the Den Denali Commission's work very different from what has gone on in the past? Well, I think that most of the, uh, the federal agencies and the state agencies have a focused approach now. We've identified some priorities, and we're bringing the, uh, the efforts of both the federal state government on those. And um, what are some of the issues that you see personally as critical issues in rural Alaska? Well, I, I would have to say the ones that we're working on right now. Uh, you heard this morning about the bulk fuel uh, problem out there. Um, <clears throat> that was a severe problem in many communities, leaking fuel tanks, the inability of the communities to address those the concerns. Um, and we have now a plan in, in, in place to deal with that problem. Uh, same with uh, health care facilities, uh, water sewer. Uh, these are all top priorities that uh, we're addressing. And uh, what perspective, perspectives do you think you personally bring to the commission? Well, I've been a businessman in the state of Alaska for a long time. I've been a contractor. Uh, Associated General Contractors represents approximately 600 uh, employers in the state of Alaska so that we, we bring the representation or the perspective of the workforce, uh, the employers that do the work, the construction community. And, um, why do you think that's an important voice to have uh, you know, on the commission and on the board? Well, most of the, the uh, efforts and initiatives we're looking at do involve construction basic infrastructure, uh, building something, making sure that it lasts, training people. Uh, that's what we do uh, as our industry. And, uh, and as far as the, the training, why is local training and local employment such a, a focus of the Net Island Commission? Well, one of, the, uh, one of the efforts is to try to make sure that the, the money stays in the community if we can. To do this, however, in a cost-efficient manner means that the employees, the, the workers, have to really be trained. Uh, you can't just hire somebody and assume that you're going to get productivity unless they've had some training. A normal apprenticeship program takes anywhere from six to 8,000 hours of on-the-job training. So you can't just hire somebody in a community and assume that they're going to be as productive as somebody that's had this training. So we need a training process that gets people involved and in, in use that training over and over again so that they become more productive, consequently become more efficient. Therefore, the cost of the infrastructure goes down. Uh, finally, uh, anyway, as you know, the show is going to air you know, across uh, on ARCS in rural Alaska. Mm -hmm. what, what are some, uh, if you have any way for Fran to cross back to put <laughs> She's next then, see? Yeah, she might. <laughs> oh, no, it's fine. <laughs> That's all right. We're all on tape. We're all fine. Call me if you want me. Um, well, what, do you have any uh, final thoughts that, that you'd like people watching this to uh, understand about the commission? And uh, Well, you know, we set the priorities based on their needs and their priorities. And uh, to the extent that, that we misprioritize, maybe we just don't understand. So uh, we're probably very open. We'd like people to know what we're doing. We think we've identified the appropriate priorities. But if we're making a mistake, we need to hear from them. Reagan, anything okay. else you like that? No. That's it. All right. I appreciate you taking the time. I can go back to my sandwich? Yeah, sorry about tearing you away. That's all right. Appreciate you doing I, I can avoid or miss a few of those. Okay. If you could, I'm just going to have you look. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, 
Why do you think the uh, Denali Commission's work is so important? The Denali Commission is making it possible for communities in rural Alaska to get the kind of community and economic development that they'd really like to have. The federal government's money makes it possible for some of the basic things like energy and bulk fuel storage and health clinics to become realities. It's really an important thing that Senator Stevens has done and I'm delighted to see that the Commission has taken this money and really partnered with communities to make a difference for the short term and the long term for rural Alaska. Very good. And um, the Commission has a number of key principles. Talk about one that stands out in your mind. Well, one of the key principles is working with local groups. It isn't about the Denali Commission telling communities what's good for them. It's about listening to communities and regions to find out what really makes sense so that the projects are sized appropriately, things that can be sustained by the communities, but also that can really meet their short-term and long-term needs. That's a very different approach than what sometimes the federal government does when it tells you, take it, this is what's good for you. The Denali Commission's principle of listening and working with communities I think is a big part of its success. And uh, what makes the uh, commission different from other government projects? Before you answer, let me just jump and check the... Okay. Okay. What makes the uh, commission different from other government projects that have come to rural Alaska, maybe come and gone from rural Alaska? The approach that the Denali Commission takes is one of working with local, state, and federal entities as well as whatever private sector groups in that region want to be part of the team. In other words, it's a cooperation model as opposed to kind of a top-down, we'll do it for you model. That's really different and I think it's the model for where government needs to go in this country, not just for rural Alaska but for this whole country, of how do we make the system work in a way that everybody can buy in, can be partners, can contribute something, but can also help design it. Because if you design it, you own it. If somebody just gives it to you, well, it, it not only might not meet your needs, but you're not going to have the same level of commitment to making it work. Okay. And um, what do you see personally as critical issues for rural Alaska? Well, rural Alaska faces some tremendous hurdles, particularly as the commercial fishing industry is suffering. So much of coastal Alaska depends upon commercial fishing in addition to subsistence fishing and personal use fishing and even sport fishing. So to the extent that that takes a lot of money out of people's pockets and reduces the economic viability of many of our coastal rural communities, it's a huge problem for us as a state. And I think it's one of the real challenges that we face because even though you'd like to say, well, there are other options and let's diversify the economy, coming up with those that really are sustainable and can stand on their own is not an easy thing. I think the idea that communities and regions can do planning that's realistically based on what resources exist there and what infrastructure needs there are uh, gives us some hope, gives us some feeling that we can make some progress in some regions. But not all regions are going to have the answer to that very difficult dilemma, particularly if salmon fishing continues to be in a depressed, in a depressed status. Uh, you've talked before um, a lot about, I've heard you speak about the rural-urban divide. And um, what do you think the Commission's work is going to do to help bridge that? Well, I hope that the Denali Commission can be a vehicle for urban Alaska to understand how much of its economy is really dependent on rural Alaska. You know, so much of the activity that goes out in rural Alaska, whether it's building schools or houses or providing new electrical plants or whatever, really comes out of Anchorage, Fairbanks, Juneau. The regional centers get economic benefit from that as well. I think the Denali Commission can help show people that we're tied together, we're mutually dependent, and that if rural Alaska is doing poorly, urban Alaska is not going to do very well either, and vice versa. We really are one state, we're tied in this together, and the Denali Commission, because it has representatives from both rural and urban Alaska, because we hold meetings throughout the state, I think can help get that message out that our economies are tied together. And uh, my last question to you is compared to uh, other government projects that you've seen 
is the commission operating efficiently? Well, I think it's operating efficiently because it has to. Uh, the federal law says that you cannot spend very much money on administration. There's a cap on it at 5%. So we're really being held to a, a very um, tough standard in keeping our administrative costs low. That's another reason why we have to partner with other agencies and communities to make things happen because we have to make sure that if they're already doing it, they can help us do it instead of our just hiring a lot of people to make it happen. So we have to uh, function efficiently. Um, the real challenge, though, is the planning part, because we were talking this morning about cost overruns and the extent to which some projects ended up costing more than we'd hoped to. Well, that part of that problem is inadequate planning. This commission doesn't have money to do planning or to help communities do the kind of planning that they'd like to do. I hope that the University of Alaska and some other partners might be able to improve the capacity of communities to do the planning so that when they scale a project, it really is realistic, and so we won't end up with cost overruns of the magnitude that we talked about, at least in two of the communities. You know, we only talked about two. There are another 40 where we didn't have cost overruns, and so things things are going well, we shouldn't let the exception color our vision of the whole, which is that all things considered, we're not only spending the money wisely from the standpoint of what the community needs are, but we have been on budget, and I think we should be proud of that. Very good. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? Uh, it's probably more than enough. <laughs> but thank you, Mike. So I can check the microphone. Could you just say your name and spell it for me? Yeah, Mark Hamilton, M-A-R-K-H-A-M-I-L-T-O-N. And then you can just look at me and try and ignore the camera as much okay, as possible. Okay, sure. Um, well, Mark, first of all, what do you think, um, what kind of difference do you think the Dallas Commission is going to make for rural Alaska? Well, I think the Denali Commission is going to enable us to most efficiently and effectively uh, utilize uh, available funding, and that's state funding, uh, local funding, uh, grant funding, uh, uh, federal funding, of course, and uh, uh, allow us to, to get the greatest synergy out of uh, organizing the applications and the uh, augmentations of those funds one to another uh, to start to uh, provide a sustainable infrastructure for our rural communities. Now the Commission has a number of key principles. Um, talk about one that stands out in your head. For me the central one is sustainability. Um, the fact is that we've had a lot of good projects, uh, uncoordinated uh, if you will, in, in the sustainability area that uh, uh, have placed at a rural site the right kind of facility, but ha have not ensured that that facility uh, was uh, maintained or maintainable uh, by individuals in the community. Uh, this has the uh, significant benefit of, of providing jobs for the community, but it also has a, a larger efficiency uh, of sustainability in that you have people locally who can maintain the piece of equipment, do minor repairs on the piece of equipment, and at a minimum uh, monitor the piece of equipment so we can get the greatest uh, life utility uh, of the particular project. And um, we've been committed to that uh, from the beginning. I'm not saying that's easy. I'm saying it's necessary and we have to do what we can. Okay. Here just a moment. Sure down my list of questions somewhere. <laughs> now, rural Alaska has seen, uh, you know, government projects come and go. Right. What makes what the Denali Commission is working on different from what has gone on before? Well, I think there's a number of uh, things that make our projects different than uh, than projects in the past. One is the insistence on uh, community buy-in, a community plan, uh, so that the community is not put in the position of uh, having to accept this particular piece of uh, uh, equipment or this particular project simply because uh, 
If you pass, you lose the opportunity. I mean, that, that will certainly inspire people to just take what they can get. Uh, by uh, involving the community, by uh, aiding and then insisting on a community plan, uh, we can see together where uh, the project ought to be cited, uh, what other projects it needs to be uh, aware of in that citing so you don't have uh, incompatible uh, equipments or incompatible facilities uh, going in, in in close proximity. Uh, it obviously uh, has all the other benefits of, of uh, talking to the community. I mean, these are the individuals who live there, and they know what they want. And uh, the idea that somebody can just come running in from outside and saying, I know exactly what you want, uh, it's just, it's wrong in principle, and it ends up being wrong in practice, because you don't have an ownership, and you don't have a pride and a responsibility for the uh, piece of equipment or the, or the installation or the, uh, uh, or the facility. Switch this tape out. Okay. How are you doing, sir?